Okay, now that you've seen what we can do, I'm gonna put down a low poly model into the description for those of you that have a shorter attention span. But if you wanna follow this tutorial, just go ahead and go to Gildor's homepage and download the UE Viewer, the Win32 version, and that's what we're gonna start out with. All right, now you've got your umodel.exe downloaded, so we can actually start out working. Um, you'll have to find PUBG, which is located within your Steam apps, and you can search for heightmap.pack. Now you're gonna get either Irangle or Desert, which is Miramar, or you're gonna get Savage in a few weeks, I guess. And you can just copy one of these heightmap.pack files into a new folder, which contains that pack file and the umodel.exe. Just start up the umodel.exe, nothing more required and just change your platform to pc it will auto detect the right platform anyways but you'll be good to go now um, a few weeks ago um i think two updates ago they starting cooking these files down with a key now that key you will have to find online every new update so you could use this one if you're quite early but later on you're definitely going to use a new key um open it up and change to flat view and search for height so you only get the information that contains height map information Control a mark everything and then just go straight ahead and export it if it does ask you to pick an unreal engine 4 version it does not matter which one you pick it's gonna work as long as you pick four point something i did it with 4.19 you can go for 4.1 4.2 probably gonna be soon available too just pick one you'll be good to go i compared two of these and it didn't make a difference now that process takes about one and a half minutes and exports all of the information we have in that into actual viewable material now it's going to give you a folder that contain uh, that is named the way the map you just used and it's going to look quite a lot of uh, a lot like the umodel.exe view we just had it's about 40 different folders that tell where these files that are in there have to go now those are tga files we can open up with gimp photoshop whatever and we can have a look into them uh, about 512 by 512 and they are just um a topographic map so what a topographic map is each closed circle means it's one layer one height now that layer can be 10 centimeters 10 inch one meter 100 meters but it's one layer so this is i'm quite sure the top left of irangle and it's underwater so it does look quite rough um you'll see that later on in the model um on average the underwater looks extremely rough now we want to get all this information into one we want to merge them down now we could do that by hand or we're going to use a script you can find on github now you search for pubg minus tga minus slice.py and copy all 142 lines of code just copy them and make a new text document now that text document you can name it whatever you want just remember what you did call it open it up and just Control V, paste that in there, and make sure that you have the right amount of lines. You can do that with Notepad++ so you didn't miss anything. 142 is the number you're aiming for. Now, change the file extension to .py, so later on when we're running the PowerShell, it does know that this is a Python script. Now, I did name it differently before, and um, we're just gonna open up PowerShell with Shift right click in the folder that we have our script in, and type in command python script.py which is a script that we're using minus p output slash why are we typing output now that is a folder that contains information we just exported with you model in the right folders now you pick all the folders you've got and put them right into output and that's where you have your information and in the same folder you have your output folder you're gonna have your script.py or whatever you call it if you do call it differently it's not gonna work due to some artistic reasons and uh, 
thanks to the guy anyways that he did that script. Um, the thing that is running this is um, Pillow. It's a library for Python. If you do not have it installed, it's, you can do it right over the PowerShell. I'm just gonna tell you it's missing and you can just type in that you wanna install it. It's gonna give you that. If you don't know how, just type help. Now you end up with two files, about 200 megabytes and 130 megabytes. It's a PNG file, just a normal um, yeah, image. Now this is a actual script that we used in Python and you can see 512 by 512, that's our native resolution of the TGA files we had. You could go down with that resolution so you end up with a smaller picture, but we don't want to do that beforehand. If you want to change anything, Against my advice, um, you can do that by typing minus the letter, space, and the option that you want to use. If you want to change the map, you have to make sure that you type in Miramar or soon to be Savage. Just make sure that you type in what you want, and you'll get what you want. Make sure that you don't take away too much information beforehand. I advise you to take the maximum resolution because Pillow doesn't do a quite good job in getting that information out of the files that we're having. Try to take along as much information as you can on the way and then go down when you need to. Now, let's have a look at the normal file. Now, I'm not sure what this is used for. It looks it does look quite sharp and you can already tell it takes my computer to open up a few seconds. But to be honest, it has shadows on it so we won't be able to use it because we work with brightness later on. But if you want to use it for artistic reasons, go ahead. Um, I use it as a background for this video. And yeah, that was a military plant. Just a huge plane. But yeah, um, we can just zoom out of that and actually have a look into the height map. Because that's what we're going to work with later on. Um, now, do remember the height map. Still pretty big, but we'll get to that later on. Um, Right now we're gonna have a look into it. Now this does look quite blurry. If you see this, it, this doesn't look good. But blurry means that it's not a whole lot of incline. Now if you have two pixels next to each other that have a large contrast and brightness, that means you have an extremely steep incline. So blurry doesn't equal bad information, but in this case means good information. Now, since we don't need a STL file, Stereolithic that is, later on, um, that's our 3D file that we're using for printing, we're gonna cut down on the information we have and we're gonna do it with Photoshop or GIMP, or you could actually do it with Paint if you want to, but I don't see the reason. Do get GIMP, I love it. Now, scale that down to a quarter in each direction. Um, because those STL files you won't be able to run on your computer. Most problems, programs will crash if you fill up, fill up your RAM and most 3D printers will do much earlier. Now, if you do cut down to that size, make sure that you don't get any blank pixels. If you do, you're gonna end up with a tiny, tiny little wall in your 3D model and that's probably gonna brick your print. So make sure you don't have that. You can see that you have the right resolution on the top left where actually um, you have the grayscale one layer and the resolution of that picture. Now I exported over the old file that you're having. Do use PNG. Um, if you use JPEG, that's gonna compress it. And we don't wanna have that. Now, you see we have lost about 99% of the information we had, or at least of the file size, but the information still does look quite the same. Now, what we need is a program that knows what a height map is and puts that into a 3D model. Someone wrote a JavaScript for that, so we're gonna go on SourceForge and we're just gonna download the height map to STL jar. That is a tiny, tiny little jar file, 15 kilobytes, so it's basically nothing. And it's gonna do the job for us in doing that. Now, check again that your height map has the right file size or resolution. And you're gonna use this that I've wrote down there in your PowerShell. Um, because the problem is if you go up with resolution, Java does use quite a lot of RAM. So open up your PowerShell and type in command, type in Java, and then you're gonna type in the maximum RAM that you wanna use. I do advise to go for one gigabyte 
in 2K resolution, you'll be fine with doing that. Half gigabyte minimum and type the M for megabytes. So if you don't write anything, it's gonna crash. Type in the jar file that you're using and type in the folder containing the map and the map name and check for upper and lower case. Now that's one of the biggest mistakes you can make in Python because that's probably gonna crash. You see base height is 10, model height is 350. Now we want the base height, so if we go to completely dark with just all Fs, we're gonna have nothing. So you would have a hole in your model. We don't want that, so we're gonna pick base height. And the 350 is a maximum height of your model if it's completely white. So if you have it completely white, it's gonna be that high. If you go for a quarter of that resolution, you should cut down the height by a half. For 2K resolution, you should be good to go with 250 to 400. Now, if we've done that, we will um, get a nice looking stereolithic 3D file, um, which does represent what we will get later on when 3D printing quite good. You can tell underwater is pretty rough, but I do have to cut down on those triangles because I ended up with 1 billion and took me about 10 minutes to open this up. So, um, don't overshoot it. If your printer can't handle it, my, mine couldn't. I had the Maker GM3 and that thing actually is pretty new. So yeah, you have to check for that, that you don't get the file size above 200 to 500 megabytes.